and we're going to look at a soil profile. Look at the soil profile and and the different types of soil as you go down through the profile. Um, okay, so look at one of you. Uh, one thing that you must all understand that all of your soils are a little bit different, um, and having a good understanding of your own soil will help you with not only managing your nutrients and fertilizer inputs, but also your irrigation management, and that will help you manage your salt as well. So one of the things we're going to look at today is uh, how, uh, what different texture a soil is. That's the name texture, is the different type of soil. Um, and that will help you work out how much water that that soil can hold. At the last workshop, we showed uh, everybody who attended that exactly how to do a soil test to, to send to the laboratory. Okay, so that's very important to understand what you need to do to improve your soil. So let's go and have a look at the soil pit here. Let's all move over here. Now in that soil is a mixture of very, very small particles called clay. Yeah. And, and much bigger particles called sand. Some soils have got more sand, or some soils have got more clay. And that will change how they perform and how much water they will hold. I might just do a texture test for these people. Yep. Yep. So I will show you how to do one on this soil. Basically what we want to do is make sure we get rid of all the gravel and bits of rock. Okay, so get rid of all the, all the roots, all the rocks in there. Nice big handful and then slowly add some water and make like a mud pie. <laughs> Be careful not to add too much though, otherwise just make a big sloppy mess. Besides sand and clay in soil, can you think of something else that you might have in soil? Anybody? Anything of it? Manure. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Called organic, organic material. material. Yeah. Organic material. Soils with more organic material perform better. They hold water better, they have better what we call structure, and uh, they're more resistant to salt in soil. We make a ball like that. It's called a bolus. Firstly, we see if you make like that and push, if it's mostly sand, it just falls to pieces. This one I can see has got some clay in here, colour. Yeah. <laughs> so next thing you try and make a ribbon, like so. Make a ribbon and you lay out on a bit of paper, it'd be better. Just try and make a ribbon as long as you can and then it breaks off. And do, do that maybe three or four ribbons. Okay, so if I make a ribbon like that, and then I measure how long that ribbon is, and then I will be able to put that into a group on the, on the sheet that I give you, and will tell you whether it is sandy loam or clay loam. Or, thank you. And uh, you will be able to classify your soil there. And it will it'll tell you a lot about how much, how much water your soil will hold, how much drain, how free it will drain, and how much, it'll, it'll tell you a little bit about how much nutrient it will hold as well. Okay, so this one is short, so I can see that this has got lots of, quite a bit of sand in here, and I can feel that. You can hear sandy, very gritty. Okay. What, what this means is that the water will travel through here very well. It will not hold too much water, but enough because it's got bits of clay in it and it looks good. That's called texture. Each of these layers has got a different texture. So they will hold a different amount of water, each of them. Phil, you couldn't find us a bit of uh, clay anywhere, could you? We didn't. 
Phil has got one here called uh, that that is more like clay. Now some of you growers may have more clay type soils. They call these tight soil or hard soil, and this is called light soil. Oh, that's hard. It is. Yeah. There are lumps of that clay down there. It's, it's... See, but I can make a ribbon. Have the clay. Keeps it's going. Clay. Keeps going. I can make a ribbon that keeps going. <laughs> mm. Okay, so that one is much longer than that one. So I measure that one then with a ruler and it will tell me what sort of soil that is. But I can feel that's heavy clay. Now, do you think that would drain very well? Does this drain? No, no, no you're no. going to have problems immediately with that. But it does hold quite a bit of water and it holds nutrients very well. So some things are good about it and some things are not so good. Yeah, there's not, not much sand in that. No. no it's a bit. A little bit, little bit in there, but yeah. it's, it's basically not very gritty at all. It's very, mm. it's little very bit smooth. of sand in there, not much. Okay, but this soil, okay, how many have you, have, <coughs> of you have got what they call topsoil? This is topsoil here, all the way through here. All A horizon. How many of you got topsoil that deep? Any, any others? Yeah? Is yeah. your soil that yeah. deep? Yeah. Oh, you lucky, yeah. lucky man. This is very good soil. See how the roots go all the way down here? There's roots down here. So when you put a plant in, he can get his roots and explore all of that soil. So what that means is that when you water that soil, that plant can get access to lots of water and lots of nutrient in that soil. So you can go a long time in between irrigation, long time, but if you have soil that's only that deep, and maybe there's a layer of clay underneath, like that, it's okay. it still can grow in there, but you must understand that there's only so much soil for the plant to get water from. The plant can't get water all the way down here. It stops there, the roots will stop at that clay. So more frequent irrigations are needed. If you understand your own soil, how much deep, how deep each layer is, and how much clay or how hard it is, then it will help you to work out how often you need to irrigate. In this soil, it's all topsoil down to there, but even this layer down here, if I look at that, it's quite sandy. It's got sand in there, which means that it still drains water through it. Where sometimes I've seen soils where the clay is very, very heavy and very hard and the water cannot drain through. There are some things you can do to help to make them drain better. But you probably all know one of the first things you can do is make a mound. So make deeper soil. Oh, this one's good all the way. Okay. So that's each each one's got different texture. I might just do a quick texture test on this too. <laughs> Come on, you say that in English. No, we just talk to my soil too good, I can't translation mine. <laughs> It, it, it is nice. It is nice soil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's good soil. But you see down here, a little bit of clay, but still sand. I can feel sand in there. That would be very free drained. So this is what we talk. This is what we call texture. Mm. Once you get a bit of moisture in it, that yeah. clay really comes out. It would. Um, it would. Uh, it, it could compact down if it got sodic. It would probably start dispersing and, and yeah. forming a, a real layer there. But. Uh, but the way it is there at the moment, it's quite, quite nice and structured and the water's moving through. Okay, now, when I went to dig this here, I look at this and I thought, that just breaks up. It makes it, it's beautiful. So I thought that was mostly sand. But when I make it wet, it's clay. So, by the way that Fung has managed his soil, and he has made sure that there's no salt building up in his soil, he has made it perform better. 
Yeah, okay, so I'll work on that while I'm, I'll, I'll let that dry just a little bit. I'll let it sit actually, and then I'll do a texture test. The, the next thing we look at with soil is what they call structure. Okay? <coughs> so, you can see a soil with good structure will still have blocks like that that will hold together. And I can push on that and maybe break that up but into, into powder. But the structure, the blocks stay together. You see, there's lots of little blocks in here like that. This can be, uh, a lot of this can be because it's got good organic content. But the other thing is too that Fung probably does not Rotary hoe too much. Before, yes, but not now. Yeah. Too much rotary hoe be be okay, beats it and beats it. <laughs> and <laughs> makes really makes fine. it poor structure. In fact, I think full rotary hoe too much in here already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, that if you can leave lots of s like that is the best. So keep your structure intact. Mm. Because if you damage your structure, you will change how the soil behaves. It will, it will not hold nutrients so well, it will not hold water so well. And your plants won't like it as much. But when you look at this, you say, this is the most important layer, it's your topsoil. That's your money, yeah, that topsoil. <laughs> and what happens in this part of the soil, it, it's very important for your plants. So, this is why we're trying to get you to do a soil analysis on this part of your soil profile, so you understand that part. Um, so, it, it, it teaches you how to manage this very valuable layer of soil. One, one other thing that you can do wrong too, is if you have a heavy clay layer here, maybe, and you rot rotary hoe all the time, you're always rotary hoeing to the same depth. And it makes a hard layer, very hard. So one way you can do that, which some growers do, is they do a rip, you know? They get a rip. So if you have the hard layer, then maybe every now and again to rip is a good idea for you. Tony, just mention to them they need to use the right rippers. Some of these guys have got rippers that bring subsoil up. Okay, like a like delving. Yeah, oh, just some cheap yes, rippers. Design is really important. Yeah, you know, yeah. with that. Like a yeoman plough, not agro plough. What, what did you say? Two, okay. two words about that? Just in regards to uh, when you rip your soil, it's very important that where Tony's standing, that subsoil stays there because some of you have got yellow soil, very nasty soil. And unlike Fung's, it's very good. Some of that soil is nasty with boron, high sodium chloride. So if you bring some of your topsoil to sorry, the subsoil to the topsoil, you bring up some headaches. So it's very important to be able to open the soil up, but leave the subsoil down below. Mm. Okay, so if you've got a ripper like that, throw it away. There's always more salt coming on, so you must learn how to manage that so it does not become too poisonous to your plants. Okay, so I did a texture test on down here, this soil. Now the texture says that it is a heavy clay. It's clay. But because of the way Fung has managed his soil, the structure of that is very good. So it drains very well. Did you tell them about gypsum? And yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so things like that really help on heavy soils. Uh, help to make it more open and let the water drain through. So, I, I just need to, um, for the English speaking people, just to highlight what Fung just said before and not underestimate what Fung's doing here. Fung's actually done a lot of soil testing over four or five years. And what's happened is he's actually put in organic matter according to a soil test, and he's added gypsum when it's required according to a soil test. And what Tony's trying to show is it's, that that's actually moved down through the profile. So not <coughs> only is he working on his topsoil, he's actually working on his subsoil as well. So the benefits he's getting on his topsoil, he's also getting further down. Now, it means that if you've got a poor subsoil, it could take you four or five years yes. to fix it, but you can fix it. And you can see with Fulmer, he's actually done a very, very good job. He's actually got a, a profile 
down to almost a metre. It's beautiful. Which looks after growing these crops. So, uh, and you can do your soil analysis, but make sure you get somebody who's very experienced and skilled, like Phil or Dominic, to provide you with advice on what to do. But I'll stress because yeah. Phil knows when he did the workshop years ago with me, and, and I've done a lot of workshops, do not apply gypsum. Yeah. Unless the nope. soil test tells you to. Nope. There are other things about soil which you must understand, um, and your soil test will tell you that too. And one of those is, is called the pH, and that is how acid or alkaline your soil is. You can help to bring this into balance too, but if your soil is not what they call neutral soil, which is good for vegetables, if it's too high acid or too high alkaline, then some nutrients will be very hard for the plants to get. And you can keep putting more of that nutrient on, and the plants still can't get it. Yeah. So look at pH 2, that's acid, acid level of soil. Now, it, all of you cannot necessarily, like, you can't all have a soil pit like this. It would be nice. <laughs> so maybe I can ask Phil to show you a simple way to look at your own soil profile. Your soil where the layers change. Dominic, we could actually do this as part of a visit. This this thing, yeah, we've got a profile. Oh, we'll get one. And, uh, and we'll take it around with the papers and, and draw them a profile there. Because if you're going to work out your, your raw figures, you need the... Need the profile. You need the profile. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Phil, you need a bit more muscle. Than <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a little, little bit, bit deeper. deeper. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... Uh, okay, so you can see... see the colour changes. Yeah.